Welcome back everybody to this exciting edition of the Wayback Tech and in this video I'm going to be assembling a dual Pentium 3 system and I'm going to be benchmarking it so let's get started shall we? Well first things first the system has to be built so I'm using the case that I used for the Pentium Pro build a while back the main component of this build is, of course, the motherboard, an ASUS P2B DS Revision 105 in the case of this particular one. The reason for stating the revision of this motherboard will become apparent later on in this video. Dual slot one with onboard DAPTEC SCSI. The seller shipped this board with 512 megabytes of PC133 cast latency tube memory, which is as good as you can get for SD RAM, this speed anyway. A pair of Coppermine Slot 1 processors running at 1 GHz each with a bus speed of 133 MHz. The heat sinks are what was already installed on the processors when I purchased these and it turned out that while I do have several SECC2 coolers around, I, I didn't have any identical coolers in the size that I felt comfortable with using uh, for a 1 GHz processor, so I ended up just using the heat sinks that came with these and slopping on some new thermal compound while I was at it. For sound, Sound Blaster Live X Gamer. Hard drive I'm putting in this system is a 34 gigabyte SCSI drive, which is uh, reasonably quiet and cool running, actually. Uh, no worse than a typical IDE drive of this time period. Now for the GPU I tested several cards and throughout the testing there were only three cards that stood out that were suitable with the uh, AGP1 spec uh, because that's a 3.3 volt spec uh, and they also ended up coping with the overclocked AGP speed fairly well, at least well enough to get some benchmarks ran. Uh, the Radeon 7564 megabyte card. Uh, the Hercules Prophet 3 GeForce 3 card again with 64 megabytes. And a cheap and nasty FX5200, which, uh, while it worked, it ended up being the slowest of all three by a pretty decent amount, so I won't be including it in the benchmarks here. Stability with the video cards was a huge deal, and in the end, the only card I tested that ran everything without one hitch with the overclocked AGP bus was the Prophet 3. So that is the card that will be remaining in this system for the time being. Once I had the system up and running with Windows 2000, the task of clocking the motherboard to 133 MHz proved to be a little bit difficult, but not impossible. While consensus on the interweb seems to be that revisions older than 106 are incapable of running 133 MHz, as it turns out there actually is a way to do it. Versions prior to 106 used the ICS 9150 clock gen IC. And ASUS changed the clock gen to the ICS 9250 with revision 106, which was capable of running at up to 150 megahertz. But ASUS went with the slap and tickle approach by changing clock gen only, and they failed to add the fourth jumper necessary onto the motherboard for allowing the various clock speeds that this generator was capable of actually operating at. The jumper settings for 133 MHz actually ran the PCI bus at 44 MHz instead of 33. Mods to add the fourth jumper were done to allow possible combinations to be used, including the correct quarter PCI clock divider when operating at 133 MHz. Oddly though, this board does have the ability to change the bus speed and multiplier in the BIOS, which can be momentarily seen when entering the menu. Opening the ROM file in the Award BIOS Editor shows the option is indeed there and enabled, yet something is keeping it from actually showing up in the BIOS for more than a blink of an eye. It also looks like certain bus speeds are missing as well. Perhaps this is simply an unfinished portion of the BIOS that never functioned correctly anyway and ACES just never bothered to fix it. To get around the shortcomings with the jumpers on this motherboard, meet an old friend, Soft FSB. 
while the ICS9150 profile within soft FSB and the hidden jumper settings on the motherboard for 133 MHz yielded a very odd 111 MHz using the ICS9250 profile instead and setting it for 124-31 actually res did result in 133 MHz bus or to be precise 132.7 and it did have the proper quarter PCI divider and the actual clock speed of the processors ended up landing in at 995 MHz which is yeah, that's close enough for government work to 1 GHz benchmark wise well, for the gaming benchmarks, I'm using Quake 3 and Unreal Tournament for the benchmark portion of this video. Uh, I also threw in Quake 2 just for the fun of it. Both Quake 3 and Unreal Tournament are SMP aware, although Quake 3, that has to be enabled for it to function. Synthetic benchmarks are some good old-fashioned Mad Onion 3D Mark 2000 and 2001. I like the name Mad Onion better than Future Mark, personally. And uh, all the benchmarks here, uh, the Quake 3, Quake 2, and Unreal Tournament are ran with highest settings, quality settings, 1024, 768, 32-bit color. And Unreal Tournament is SMP aware by default. I ran Quake 3 both with SMP enabled and disabled, so you can see the difference there. And I've got some pretty charts as well, along with all the footage captured from this computer with the Hercules Profit 3 card. So, enjoy the benchmark results and I'll see you on the other side of this.
So as you can see at these clock speeds, dual Pentium 3, there's really not a whole lot of advantage, at least in Quake 3 anyway, with having a second processor. And there's a lot of factors to that. You know, we're trying to cram two processors down a single 133 megahertz bus pipe there, so it's not doing very good at that. It's probably pretty much maxing out at this point and causing some other bottlenecks in the system. We've got AGP2X on this motherboard, which is, of course, another bottleneck. 133 megahertz RAM. The RAM's trying to get memory sent to both of those processors. There's a lot of factors on these older dual Pentium systems, Pentium, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, stuff like that, the way they were designed. They just weren't t terribly optimized for SMP capabilities, but uh, there's a little bit of a boost. It's kind of a fun thing to have two processors. Um, I would imagine there's probably a little bit more benefit to SMP aware programs on this particular motherboard. Uh, if the processors were to say 500, 550, 600 megahertz, something like that, it'd give a little bit more, a um, little bit more headroom on the bus there for both processors to actually uh, work at their full potential. Not to mention Quake 3 is known for the SMP support to be a little bit lacking, so that's another factor too. I was a little disappointed that the minimum frame rate on Unreal Tournament was 28 or something like that. Um, and almost, but not quite, made it to 60 there. Uh, 54, I think, was the highest one there, an average of like 38, so I was a little disappointed. But then again, it was running 10 by 7 with max settings and 32-bit color. 16-bit color really didn't lower or increase the frames at all. It was pretty much the same, so I didn't bother with those. But um, I think this is about, if I remember, this the numbers here are pretty similar to the Tooleton 1.4, which would be about right considering that it's a single core, single processor running on that uh, 133 megahertz bus. But that did have a 4x AGP, so I don't know. But uh, I will probably be testing that again in the future as I've got another Tualatin 1.4 and that motherboard, the 815EP board, that um, ABIT, ASUS, I can't remember what it is now. But anyway, yeah, I've got that again, so I'm going to be uh, running some proper benchmarks on that this time that I didn't do last time on it. And I've got another dual Pentium 3 build on the way going to compare it to this. It has no HEP slot, it's PCI-X only which is the same bandwidth equivalent to an HEP4 slot so and those processors are 700 megahertz with 2 megabytes of level 2 cache just to give you a hint of what this actually is going to end up being I don't have the parts yet I probably won't have everything until sometime next week but uh, when I get to building that, I'll definitely do a video on that and the benchmarks just like I did on this video. So it'll be kind of, I'm kind of interested to see how that turns out, especially with the S&P performance. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care, everyone, and peace out.